Hello people, I'm glad that you've come to this video and you want to watch what discussion we had earlier in the day on a live hangout. The problem is my microphone was being very bad. It was crackling, it was unwatchable for like the first five minutes while I was talking. And I didn't want to ruin this entire video, so I decided to make it private. I decided to upload it and, of course, now record a new intro. And we're just going to have to live without those five minutes. But I did a discussion with Torg, and me and her had an interaction on Twitter where she created a great video that is in the description down below. Check out her Twitter and her DeviantArt page and that video as well. I subscribe to her channel because she is quite good at making videos and I hope she keeps doing them. Also, um, yeah, that's about it. So let's get to the video and I hope you enjoy the discussion. Um, yeah, I actually want to bring up the controversial point that I know this is an unpopular opinion for a girl to have, but... I believe they exist, but I think um, before I, I think I need to define what I mean by fake gamer or geek girl, which like I might have a different definition than others, which would be um, someone who's trying to fit into the subculture who doesn't necessarily enjoy the subculture, but they feel like they need a place of belonging. So they're basically will pose themselves into it. And with um, a lot of gaming and comics and things of that nature and other aspects of geek culture going mainstream, I think more and more people, not just girls, are doing this, but I think girls are the majority of people who are looking for a subculture in which they belong, but the problem is they don't actually enjoy the aspects of the subculture. Mm -hmm. Which I thought it was funny in your video, the first thing I noticed was you were talking about uh, Magic the Gathering. And the first thing you said, you know, you were, you jumped in like younger than I did in like Ice Age, you know, and I came in uh, as a teenager at like uh, Urza Saga, you know, so I made that joke. Um, but I, I completely agree. I don't think that necessarily a lot, because I don't think I've ever actually met in person like somebody that wants to destroy the culture and doesn't like it and is just in it to, you know, be part of the group. You know, there are people that actually enjoy reading comics or playing video games or whatever, you know, and I think the thing that is the problem, in my opinion, is just a lot of the journalism that's going on, you know, and what's being pushed from there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, You should look up sexism in magic, because I'm just bringing <laughs> magic up because... Like, magic's my thing. I've even got, like, uh, all the mana tattooed onto one of my shoulders. That's and, uh, pretty cool. Like, I used to do tournaments. Right now, I, I don't do tourneys anymore because um, with the tournament rules and keeping up with all of that and keeping up with my cards, like, supplies, because you can only play the last few editions and whatnot. So now I mostly just play casual with some pretty awesome groups. Um, yeah. But, uh... It, it like any sort of um aspect of geek culture or nerd culture like any sort of fandom if you look up sexism in the fandom you will find page after page after page of such things it's it, it's ridiculous and one of the things that i find to be most upsetting is um especially for magic the gathering i've been looking up like why do these people consider it sexist and um Apparently, it used to hire 22% female artists, and now it only hires 10% female artists. And um, I think it's mostly because, um, unlike in the old days of Magic, where they uh, hired a bunch of artists for different art styles, now um, each edition has a very signature style, so they have less artists working mm -hmm. on the various editions. And I think that they simply have some artists that are preferable because they actually hire... Um, they hire freelancers based on their work, not on their uh, gender. So it just seems to me that it's more coincidental why there's only 10% female artists. Well, and it makes me wonder how much, how much of a career can you make 
being, you know, like some of these stuff, because I know in the comic market, you know, a lot of people that work in comics don't make a lot of money, you know, like it's barely a passing career. So like, if you're going, well, there isn't very many women in it. Well, maybe they're smarter and they don't want to work in a career where you're not going to make, you're going to work a lot of hours because being an artist is hard work. You know, you got to dedicate yourself and, you know, maybe they're smart enough that they don't want to get into a career where it's kind of a dead end. Um, I I'm trying to get into that industry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's hard. You gotta be. You gotta work really hard, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I know. Right now, I'm between clients, and um, one of the things that a lot of uh, clients want you to do is sampling, where they send you samples and they or ideas, and then you actually have to draw out a full concept, and you're not even gonna get paid for it. And I've been doing a lot of that, trying to find clients, and it's just been very frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I know um, what you mean. <laughs> I mean, I want to do YouTube or like a uh, video sort of thing as a career as well. And it's like, you know, you don't get paid very well <laughs> unless you do hard work, make, make stuff that people want to watch, you know, and it's, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is like, I, I have to say, trying to be a professional artist is almost like taking a vow of poverty. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really want to become, um, I, I've been wanting to get into the comic book industry more than anything else, to be honest. Uh, I want to be a colorist because it's actually more steady work than a lot of other uh, comic book jobs. And I think I've got a knack for color or such. Well, and that's, uh, I think color is one of the most important things because, like, if you get the color wrong, it's it just makes me not even want to pick up the book and finish reading it i just want to put it back down and not buy it so like i mean i don't know how many of my videos you've watched but that's the thing that i usually comment negatively on it seems with marvel at this point i don't know who they're using but it seems really lazy they'll use like one tone and then like the whole book will be like different colors of that one tone and it's like i mean that's all right but most of the time it's bad unless it's for a certain stylistic reason. Actually, that's one of the things I really enjoy about your videos is that you actually go over not just the um, social justice aspects of the comics, but the um, the artwork and the honest critique. I've, um, I've, I've seen most of your videos, I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, but uh, on the topic of fake geek girls, um, I, I noticed that a lot of, because I know we're getting a little off topic now yeah, we've got um but on the topic of fake geek girls i i think that um there is definitely some uh issues with them infiltrating mm -hmm. certain communities um the only community that i can see the honest infiltration of is as i told you on twitter is um the cosplay community is yeah. definitely greatly affected by this because I, I'm an old school cosplayer. I've been cosplaying for 11 years now, and um, the the atmosphere of the cosplay community has completely changed. It's definitely one of the most damaged communities in um, fandom. That's actually damaged from like it, it's something that you don't just see on the internet. It's something that you can see damaged face to face, unlike a lot of other communities. Well, and uh, what do you mean by this? Because uh, I assume that back in the day in cosplay, you used to make your own costumes. That, that used to be like a big part of it, correct? Oh, I, I still do. I, I make my own costumes. I, I will sometimes buy accessories and jewelry pieces and stuff because it, you want to get it to as much of... Um, you, you, you know what I mean? You, you want to get it to as close to the character as possible. So sometimes yeah. you need to buy patches and pins and things <laughs> of that nature. But most, most things I will make myself if I have a cosplay event and I'm not prepared, then instead of bringing out the sewing machine, I bring out the duct tape and the fabric glue. Um, mm -hmm. You can make some pretty impressive cosplays with that. Just saying. Um, but what's interesting is the demographic of the cosplay community. Believe it or not, uh, 11 years ago, most cosplayers were male. 
and now it's all it seems like it's all women it is and um one of the things that i find to be quite annoying about a lot of current cosplayers is like in the past you always had the occasional cosplayer where you're like oh my goodness you're eris you must love final fantasy 7 they're like actually no like all my friends decided to dress up like final fantasy 7 characters and they needed someone to play eris and i looked me to come with them and you know you always had that occasional person who was cosplaying who wasn't really into the fandom but yeah. now it's it, it's very very prevalent like those tropes that people say that um <laughs> cosplayers don't know who the hell they're cosplaying as like i have to say it's sad but true and it's happening most office it's almost like a 50 50 when you go up to a cosplayer whether or not they're even a fan of who they're cosplaying as well and I don't think that's like a, a serious problem, but just be honest, like what what's annoying is when the people that aren't a fan, they like get butthurt about it and they're like, you know, you're sexist because you just think I, blah, 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 blah. And then you find out they don't know anything about the character and it's like, it's not sexism. You just don't know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, that's that's another thing that um that really annoys me when I'm at conventions and stuff is um some people aren't honest about their knowledge because they think that you're there there there's this common theme because um to study for this discussion I went ahead and watched a lot of videos about girls ran ranting about being called fake geek girls and they say that um uh, boys don't go through the grilling of um, when they go to events and I'm thinking back and I'm like I think I'm one of those elitists they're talking about because then I see somebody with like a spawn t-shirt I'll ask them like oh my goodness what editions have you read and um, have like did what did you think of the terrible 90s movie although I think it was terrible in a good way yeah, and uh, did you ever watch any of the? Uh, did you watch the animated movie for it? Because I, I like fell in love with that, and they'd be like, I, I just like the T-shirt. I didn't even know it was to a thing, or, <laughs> um, or, or like uh, sometimes this is the most annoying thing is when they smile and nod, but they have no idea what you're talking about, but they don't mm -hmm. just go out and say it. That is the most irritating thing ever because you get, <laughs> you get really like excited that somebody shares your fandom, but they're uh, they they don't actually, but they they won't admit to it. And I think that's more of a, I think the grilling is more of a misunderstanding than yeah. It's, it's just true. You're, you want to be like, hey, have you watched this? You found somebody that likes something and you want to discuss it, and they are insecure with the fact that they don't know what they're talking about. So they just, it's its like um, when somebody says racist or something, you know, and you're like, well, you know, I don't know why you brought that up, but that's not what we're talking about. <laughs> right. It, yeah. You know, and I think boys go through the same grilling as girls when it comes to this. It's just they, um, they don't make a big deal out of it. Yeah. Like, I, I'm sure that, I, I'm sure that when you go to a convention or you meet somebody else and they're just like, so you like this and this and this, and then you guys try and see what level of fandom you are. Because I think the grilling isn't actually to see if you're a true fan. I think it's to see where your talking points would be. Like, um, yeah. like I know you're a big comic fan, and if you see somebody who says they love X-Men, then you'll ask them if they've read the comics or if they're a fan of the cartoons or the cinematic universe, just so you know what Because there's so much X-Men, you know. <laughs> right. So... That I, I think a lot of the fake geek girl thing is a misunderstanding, and then once it became like, uh, once the term fake geek girl became like common harlot, it's like uh, more of just a playful insult that people take too seriously. Yeah, and I mean, there are the stereotypes. Men don't really care that much, so just move on. Women, you know, they get hypersensitive about some things sometimes and oh you offended me so i'm going to make a big deal about it you know that's just stuff that occurs and when it does happen it, it gets magnified because everybody sees it happening i think yeah. that's some of it you know anyways oh yeah and you know i actually think that um not just fake geek girls but fake geek guys are also an issue with it like not a major issue but i've noticed that uh like I said, the, um, the, the with the sort of, I, I don't know how this happened, but nowadays it seems like it's cool to be a nerd or a geek or 
whatnots. Yeah. And a lot of people will just kind of like pose into the the subculture and it's becoming really difficult to see who the um who the true nerds or fans are to people who just have are are I guess trying to be cool, which is which is weird that nerdy things are cool, but <laughs> Yeah, I I'm gonna blame uh Pharrell in the nineties when he created that nerd group, but Anyways, um, it's also ironic that I'm wearing fake glasses at the same time, but <laughs> that you said that, but um, yeah, I, I don't see a lot of it going on in my own personal like area or anything like that because everybody that I know likes what they like, and this might be a, a, a a Midwest thing, you know, this might not be, this might be more prevalent in, on the, on the coast where there's more people, you know, and pe and people just want to be part of groups sometimes, but, you know, when you, uh, when you want to cause a problem because somebody kind of jests with you that you don't know what you're talking about or something, you know, giving you a hard time, you know, that's, kind of where the problems start, or they want to kind of ruin it, you know, and that's where the journalism thing, I think, is, it seems like, you know, the SJWs, the quote-unquote SJWs, come in, they've come into some of these groups, and they want to change everything about it, and it's like, well, we were having fun, you know, it's, it's like if you were playing a game of Monopoly, and somebody wanted to come in and join your game and just change the rules while you're playing, it's like, no. <laughs> This is my house rules. You go play somewhere else. <laughs> oh, that that actually reminds me of like one of the reasons I brought up cosplay and the the community being damaged is um like do you remember a couple years back that whole cosplay doesn't equal consent thing and how you can't touch or like run up yeah. and hug the cosplayers? Well, th that's the thing is um I I'm also going to say something else controversial, but in my mind cosplay does equal consent because there was a culture there where um i'm not sure if you've heard of glomming glomping however you say it but um i don't know anything about cosplay so you'll have to explain it oh uh, well there, there was a culture there where um you would uh where people would run up and tackle hug you like they would oh. do the, the anime thing where they run up and tackle hug and usually if you saw a diehard fan you'd like get up yourself up against the wall so you don't get knocked over and um <laughs> us cosplayers used to have competitions to see who would get glom the most times at a convention because that's how you knew you did like the most awesome cosplay ever is if um people could not control their urges and they ran up and like tackle hugged you they um like cosplays become Halloween costuming, which you know is, uh, which isn't actually how it was. It used to be like when you cosplayed, you were the characters. You acted more like a Disney mascot than um, hmm. just going in in costume. Where um, like uh, you you tried to talk like the character, you tried to be the character, and you tried to, you know, I know it's dorky, but that's the whole fun of it is because it was so ridiculously dorky and people would literally treat you like as if you were a celebrity and they would come up and hug you and like be like oh i love you and they do like sometimes you know the, the, they would pretend to do a battle pose with you and there was a lot of touching of the cosplayers and the, one of the things is i think it's because people going into the community don't understand that that was already part of the culture where like cosplayers mm -hmm. expected to be tackle hugged we expected <laughs> to be like manhandled it's just kind of um people who say cosplayers don't do it for attention are lying of course of course you like the attention you wouldn't you dress like up and go to a convention if that's what <laughs> right <laughs> like people were like they, they do it for the love of the characters i'm like no they do it for attention don't, so, don't be silly one thing that I just connected was it's kind of like uh, the Civil War reenactors. You know, they they play a part, and they're 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 like putting on a play, but in a field, you know, in the middle of nowhere where a battle happened or something. Right. That that's what the cosplay community was. It was a very. But now we have a lot of people in it who just walk around like themselves and act like it's just a Halloween costume, and it's <laughs> it's so watered down. Like I. I really miss the old days of cosplay and people like people are now not sure how to treat the cosplayers 
you know, like in the in the old days, mm -hmm. people would just assume that they were almost like part of the convention, even though that's more of a voluntary part of the convention. Yeah. And now people are like, I actually don't like cosplaying and having people so standoffish towards me because I'm like, hey, look, I put this effort into the costume and I will talk to you like this. And like the, the people who don't know convention culture, like if you go mm -hmm. up and be like, hi, I is a shampoo. I up they look like you like you're a crazy person and in the <laughs> old days people would just be like oh i want to huggle you you're so cute yeah so, i don't think i don't think i've been to conventions where it was anything but i personally i've never cared about the cosplay thing so i was always looking at comic books so it's completely different um perspective on my part you know i didn't i might take a picture you know or something uh for a video but my whole thing was I never really cared about the cosplay. They were just always there. Yeah, I, I could understand it because you weren't really part of it. Because I think cosplay was its own subculture within mm -hmm. the fandom. So, like, I I could understand how... Because some people would just, you know, do, do about your business. You pretty much, like, when you were a cosplayer back then, you'd re really only interact with people who would interact with you, where it was a bit of a respect thing. Well, yeah. Uh, I've heard that um, the increase in cosplayers have actually been, um, uh, I will even say this because I, I sell my artwork at conventions, and a lot of the increase of cosplayers, especially like a bit, a lot of the sexy cosplayers, do take away a little bit from the comic books and the, um, and the art trying to be sold, because a lot of times they will just hang out in front of your booth and they won't mm -hmm. leave, because I guess you have a good backdrop for them getting photo ops, and that's that that's quite annoying like um I, I remember there was like a little bit more consideracy for the old cosplayers where you'd move about and not take too much attention away from the vendors well that's where the con needs to identify that problem and they need to have like a co well our co the cons i go to have a con a, a, a cosplay area you know where everybody hangs out at you know and they I don't know if that's been fixed everywhere, but that's something that they need to do, you know, because hanging out where people are trying to sell stuff is not cool. That's, uh, what is that? <laughs> There's a word for that. I just, I just left loitering? my mind. Loitering. That's freaking loitering and you're ruining somebody's business. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, um, the, the, like I live up in Alaska and for the uh, booth fees just for Alaska is like $240 for a two day convention. Is, and it's, it, it's not too bad because if you get a good day, you can make over a grand a day, but still you don't want anyone to interrupt that flow. And one of the problems too, is if you are selling a lot, they get in your way, you know, like you're trying to do business transactions. And since you're not, since you don't have a register or anything too streamlined, it's uh, quite annoying to just have people cluster in front of your group, your booth, and things. Well, it's like um, <laughs> it's like when you go get in line to talk to a comic creator, and you waited like fifteen minutes, and then you get up there, and the guy in front of you wants to like hang out and keep talking while you're trying to get your stuff and talk to him. And it's like, dude, you just had your time. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same it's kind of the same thing because he's in the way it's uncomfortable because it's like you had your chance to talk to him if you wanted to talk about that stuff more you should have like just not had me come up and uh yeah i mean there's a lot of weird stuff in cons that are just like unspoken rules that people seem to break all the time I, I think it is because of, um, well, like I was telling you that um, a lot of these subcultures, now that they're more mainstream, they're watered down and you have this huge influx of people mm -hmm. and they don't have time to saturate themselves in the culture and they don't understand the pre-existing rules of etiquette. Yeah. And people do generally have a bad sense of like rules of etiquette <laughs> in general. <laughs> um I, I don't know. You should come up here. People are like almost scary polite up here. Like um, we have standoffs where people like open the door, but the other person tries to open the door for the other person. So they have like a standoff to see who is actually going to go through the door. 
<laughs> Is that how the Palin fights usually start? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of Palin, but that's just because, not for um reasons people think. I'm a, not a fan of her. In fact, Alaskans aren't a fan of her because she's a quitter. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I was just joking, though. That was a joke. <laughs> but no, uh, she... She's a quitter. She actually wasn't that bad of, um, like, that bad when she was actually in office. Well, didn't she help the, um, didn't she put a surplus in the uh, Alaskan economy or something like that? Yeah, she actually had a really good deal with the um, oil industries and stuff like that, which is really sucky because uh, a couple years back it was like, uh taken down and stuff like that and they have a different deal going and now we have like a uh economic deficit right now which i don't know if it's because of that like i'm not too into politics like well i'm into politics but i don't know enough about the ins and outs on why we have a deficit but i know yeah. some people attribute it to that but i'm not 100 percent sure I'm well, it takes so much work you know researching Right. You know, it just takes so much. And you don't want to take somebody's word for it, so you have to read so much. Um, yeah, that, that, that's why I'm stating out that this is just anecdotes that I've heard. I'm not 100% sure on the actual reasons. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I think we had a good conversation overall. So, overall, I guess our overall point... How many times? Anyways... Our overall points are, I think that it's not a local problem so much. I mean, it can be. Um, journalism, of course, they're trying to ruin everything like they always do. And um, everything's kind of watered down because nerd culture has gotten so big. And a lot of it is communication problems, would you say? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um definitely some communication problems there and just people being a little hyperbolic and oversensitive <laughs> yeah I mean that really happens well I'm gonna look in the comment section real quick anybody that wants to ask some questions we can do that to the PC building discussion okay um, the person that's asking about watching a video hit me up at Captain Cummings on Twitter and I will watch it because I won't remember your name. <laughs> somebody says, uh, "What one thing that sucks about cosplay is every three seconds somebody asks you for a photo and you'll be trying to buy merch. Yeah, the thing about wearing a costume, like you said, you become the target. So everybody wants to come and talk to you. I want to know, if you cosplay Spidey at a convention, do you have to wear a cup so it's not obscene? <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> I was wondering what you both think about the massive censorship in media. Uh, do you want to take that one first? Yeah, that, that definitely seems like a good... Uh topic because I know a lot of YouTubers are covering that right now. Mm -hmm. um, is he referring to the uh, censoring of fake news on Facebook or just the censorship in media like with the Muslims or like uh, I'm just wondering what yeah, exactly I, what point uh, we're addressing. Well we could do um, the fake news. We could also talk about the fact that it seems like PC culture in general just censors as well. You know, you had the Batgirl Joker cover that was homaging, uh, that was a homage to the uh, Alan Moore story back in the day. They censored that right out to where you couldn't buy it. You know, oh, it, yeah. just stuff like that in general, I guess. And I actually think that um, one of the things is stylistically, I'm really disappointed that they censored that cover because I think it was gorgeous. Like, I have a. Yeah, I'm really be. fond of the aesthetic of like an ugly, beautiful type thing where it's very well drawn, but the the subject matter is horrific. So I think that that was actually more of a true piece of art in a comic book cover. So it's 
it's actually very shameful that they chose to censor it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, and I'm I'm to the sense of like, I'm I, I guess I would be less of a skeptic and more of a free speech advocate in in my channel, mostly because I think that everything should be, you know, pushed. You know, my whole thing about like my channel is I make fun of the SJW stuff, but I don't necessarily want it all gone. I just want, you know, an array of different stuff. Um, no, that, that's, that's the thing. Like, I guess one of the things I wouldn't mind mentioning about social justice is that I agree with most of it. Like, um, like let's say body positivity. I think you shouldn't be mean to fat people. You well. shouldn't be like, you shouldn't just judge people because they're Muslim or whatnot. You know, you need to take things on individual, like, you shouldn't just be blanket mean to a lot of groups. Like the ideas behind them are actually pretty noble, but the way they do it is very tyrannical. The way they go about their agenda mm -hmm. is just very overbearing and bullying. So well, and it comes off like when you first hear about it, and you're like, oh, when you first hear something that you don't agree with, and you bring it up, it's like you get shamed, you know, or they try to make you feel bad for not agreeing with them. Because why wouldn't you want to, like, you know, help black people, for instance, or something? And it's like, well, listen to what you said. Listen to the way you're doing it, you know, and it's not exactly, you know, the way you should go about it. You know, and, and, and it's gotten so, it seems like it's gotten so heavy with everything that now we have just crazy, you know, SJWs, like, or the anti-FIFA, whatever you want to call them hitting people with sticks at protests because Milo Milo, knock, but, uh, Milo uh, is trying to, you know, talk at the uh, Berkeley. I, I actually think that man is absolutely fabulous. I'm a huge fan of Milo Yiannopoulos. But, um, I've actually pre-ordered his book, so I can't wait for him to finish it. You know, it's, it's also interesting because um, uh, I'm pretty left-wing, but I absolutely love very offensive jokes and media and whatnot. <laughs> and uh, it... It's like, 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 um, I've heard from other YouTubers is that these people think that you have a right not to be offended. You, you definitely do not have a right not to be offended. You have the uh, right to be offended, but it doesn't mean anybody cares. Right. And, um, the, the censoring of the media, like I, I was going to bring that back onto the topic with that. Uh, mm -hmm. the censoring of the media seems to be that they're trying their hardest not to offend anybody and you can't really have an honest discussion if you're like um toting feels over facts you know well of course um yeah i mean and it's so crazy you said uh you're left but you like offensive jokes and the thing is is in the 90s and in the 80s it was the exact opposite you know so you had the conservative Christians that were trying to censor everything, whether it was Ozzy Osbourne or, you know, um, uh, Judas Priest and all the death metal groups like Cannibal Corpse and stuff, trying to get rid of them. But all the liberals like Jerry Springer and stuff were going crazy with all this different media that was just in your face and offensive. And it was fun, you know, and it's, it's flip-flopped at this point. You know, and it's one of those things where I think you know, anybody can be, any group can be authoritarian and try to dictate what other people can think, but it's not the way that you should go about it. You know, every, free speech should be free for everybody all the time. Well, you know, it's, it's very bizarre because, um, like I said, I, I'm, I, I consider myself left wing and I, I've been accused of being a centrist or right wing as of late when I've been talking to my left wing friends because um, on the political spectrum, I'm like almost on the corner of the left. Like I, I, I don't consider myself conservative like in the least bit, but because I'm willing to, um, like I said, when you were asking about my skepticism, it's more like, I guess more of open mindedness, yeah. I, I think would be a better term for it. Um, where, I don't necessarily think conservative views are wrong. I think that I don't agree with them because you cannot agree. Like I, I can understand being physically, physically 
conservative because I think um, I, I think left versus right is more like realism versus idealism, mm -hmm. where being left wing you're more um, idealistic, while being right wing you're more realistic, saying hey we can't do that right now, and you know why should we do such things? And the thing is, neither sides are necessarily wrong; they just disagree because. Um, there's not in a conversation there's not necessarily going down to right and wrong that's pretty black and white thinking there's you guys just come to different conclusions on them well yeah and here here's here's an example so i consider myself like libertarian because um for instance i don't necessarily agree with gay marriage in like a religious standpoint but if the state is going to be in the business of marriage, it has to be equal for everybody. You know, so that's like my standpoint on that. Or with like abortion, you know, I don't agree with taxpaying monies paying for abortion. I don't necessarily agree with abortion, but I don't think that I can really say for other people what they can and can't do. You yeah. know, so that's just my viewpoints on stuff. It's like I have my opinions, but I don't think my opinions are necessarily good for other people. Well, that's the thing, though, is um, I I've noticed, like, my friends on, like, I I've had a lot of old friends and I've had a lot of people drop me on Facebook because, uh, <laughs> like, I like basically for playing, paying devils, playing devil's advocate, where, um, like, you brought up the topic of abortion, um... I'm not necessarily going to say my stance on that. I just don't, because I'm well, actually. That's fine. Um, but people, but I will play devil's advocate for both sides and try and like say that you know there's there's moral arguments on both sides of the spectrum, and I get dropped more yeah. by my left wing friends than my right wing friends because I'm sure they're used to they're used to it being defended. But yeah, it's about um, fifty fifty on both sides. I mean. No, and, and like people are like telling me I'm I'm I've turned conservative or I'm not a true liberal because I'm willing to defend some of the moral arguments of uh, being uh, of the pro-life stance because I say, you know, ne neither side is necessarily wrong, but you know I, I try and let them s at least see what the other side is saying, and rather than taking it into consideration, I'm told that I've. You know, I've become right wing and all that jazz. <laughs> I'm like, just well, and I th I find it funny because, in my opinion, when they say far right, in my opinion, far right means you're more about yourself and you don't care about anybody else. Like, the more right you go, the more libertarian you know you are. Until you, like you know, you're basically an ANCAP. You know, where you don't want government. Everybody's their own person. You know, that's the extreme. You know, so when people say like they're far right and you're like a Nazi, I'm like that doesn't even make any sense because I mean, at least in my political definition, you know, I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the interesting things is wasn't Nazism a left wing ideology? They were the social workers party. So, yeah, it, that, it's that funny that Nazis get labeled as far right. <laughs> Because uh, I, I actually think that if you look at, um, like, other than the uh, extermination of the Jews and things like that, when you look at a lot of the um, aspects of the Na Nazi party, they were uh, a lot more um, left-leaning. Like, a lot of people don't realize they had heavy environmental policies and whatnots and anti-smoking bans and All that things stuff. of that nature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and what's interesting about it is nationalism in general gets labeled as a right-wing thing because a lot of conservatives, you know, accept that and like that sort of thing, which in general, it's very, it can become very authoritarian, which in a lot of terms, most conservatives don't agree with that. I don't agree with that, you know, so, you know, it's one of those things that I personally think that nationalists could be either political ideology. It just all depends on who adopts it. Well, one of the things about nationalism or, um, well, I don't know if it's necessarily nationalism, but uh, patriotism. I almost think like I, I used to be of the mind saying that it's a little bit like 
cultish or whatnots, but when I've been thinking about it in a realistic sense, patriotism, like more true patriotism, might actually help our economy because one of the reasons why, like I know Japan's got a similar economy to us, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why they do so well is because um, they're very nationalistic. Well, um, buy Japanese products over other nations because of their sense of superiority and whatnots, or not superiority, but you know what I mean, like pride. I well. And, and Japan's culture is very nationalistic. They're very, you know, into just Japan, you know, almost to a sense where I don't think I would call it racist, but they're ethnocentric to a sense. And I mean, that's just the way they are. And like you said, it they'll, they'll choose Japan over anybody else because that's their culture. And America, our, our downfall and our great, thing about it is our individuality you know and all everybody thinks different things i think well it, it, it is um the thing is though with the type of uh with the type of economy we have having a little bit of patriotism or nationalism would actually greatly help our um economy you know if people were to choose mm -hmm. american made and all that kind of stuff take a little bit of pride in American ingenuity and innovation. Well, and it's 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 sad because, in a sense, everything is made in China now or Mexico or whatever the fact is. Every even like the stuff that is made in America, it's the the smaller parts are made everywhere else around the world, and then it's shipped to a factory that's assembled in America. And that's it's just the way it is nowadays. It kind of it kind of sucks because you can't buy the American product like you used to in the seventies and the eighties uh, anymore, really. You know what I think's kind of a weird irony is that um, the the left has these policies that they want. You know, they want people to have uh, socialized medicine and free college and whatnot. But one of the things when I've done a lot of thought about it is the left works against themselves for their ultimate goals because. Obviously, like mass immigration brings a huge influx of cheap labor, which uh, brings down the minimum wage for everyone, which they want a higher minimum wage. And um, another thing is uh, like they want a world without borders, but you need to encourage job flow if you want free, like if you want to pay for medicine for everybody and if you want to actually pay for you know, your ultimate goals, you have to, like, basically tighten borders and tighten regulations and um, try and create as many jobs as possible because more people who are working will bring more tax dollars in so that you can actually afford your objectives. Like, it's, it's just insane to me how they can have these contradictory viewpoints that just, they're, they're very self-sabotaging is all I'm saying. <laughs> Well, and a lot of them don't understand um, just basic e economics. So you're talking about like the college thing or the healthcare thing. And they're like, I want free. And it's like, well, it's not exactly free. You'll be paying that for the rest of your life because, especially with like the college thing, if you pay for your own college, you'll pay your college loans off. It might take you the rest of your life, but... Um, once you get them paid off, you're done. But if you're getting free college, you're then paying for everybody else's college for the rest of your life. I mean, it's like, what kind of, what do you want? Do you want to pay for somebody else's college for the rest of your life? Or do you want your own personal liberty where you, you pay for what you bought? You know, and, and also, if you have free college, it also brings down standards for college because an influx of people will come in. And what happens is when these kids hit the college scene, the college want to, you know, validate the fact that they have all these people in. So standards come down so they can graduate more people. And when you lower standards, the smarter people won't work as hard either. You know, so it just brings down education in general. I, I don't like the fact of free college just on that thing alone. Uh, but so healthcare, it's a totally different issue. Like if they just got rid of, in my opinion, if they got rid of the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid and Medicare, 
at least it wouldn't have ruined insurance. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I get you. I think that the Affordable Care Act is like one of the worst compromises I've ever seen because it's like, I, I almost swear it'd be cheaper just to expand Medicaid and Medicare. I think it would have been. And um, I mean, I, I, I don't want to talk about the insurance because it's so, it's so odd. It's always brought up and I, it's so, it's such a mundane topic to me because um, I, I'm, I don't have the Affordable Care Act or have anything to do with insurance. So. Um, no, no, I, I totally get what you're saying. And, um, the oh. in you, but I don't think you're wrong. And I'm pretty sure if I brought up some of my viewpoints on such things, you could say that I'm not wrong. And the thing is we can, we can respectfully disagree with each other. And oh, I, yeah. find, I find our society right now being so polarizing that people can't even like respectfully disagree. And I think, um, with like, when the whole journalism thing, it's kind of like, um, I, I remember how a lot of journalists and a lot of uh, news stations and stuff were starting to get more of a political slant. Like we always made fun of Fox News because it's, their, their political slant is just obvious. And now yeah. it's becoming like... Um, They're the I, reasonable ones. <laughs> like I, I don't even know if there's any not like completely biased news sources out there and it's just really it's just really strange how the political vi bias goes beyond the actual news story they won't even like tell stories if um if it hurts their narrative and it's just really yeah. well and i think um i'm not sure when all this occurs because i don't even have cable so i don't watch any of the big time news i i watch youtubers i read news articles and I'll listen to somebody talk about what happened on CNN. But it seems like, honestly, CNN went from, I don't know if they're far left. They're just, they seem very unethical. And MSNBC was always far left. And you had Fox News, which was far right. But it seems like during this election, you know, you had Megyn Kelly, who hated Donald Trump. You know, and she's moved, did she move on to like NBC or MSNBC or something? Uh, anyways, um, so, you know, you had a split at Fox News where it seems like they were just more object objective at this point. That's just what I seem to observe without actually watching any of them because um, I don't have cable, but... Uh, I have cable, but I try not to watch the news because <laughs> a lot of it's kind of trash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all opinion-based, and... I think that goes to, I think that gets fully blamed, in my opinion, on, uh, you know, John Stewart, because, um, you know, he wanted to play news on a comedy show and just gave all opinions. And now that's all anybody seems to do. Well, I, I wouldn't blame John Stewart so much because he, like, he, he went and said, this is comedy. You know, this is my opinions. We're trying to be, we're trying to be silly and like definitely a very left wing stance on everything. But he was honest about it. I, I just think it was a bad move on the news's part to, um, to emulate that because that just seems retarded, like just really ridiculous. Like, the well, and I agree, but, um, they followed the ratings because he had a very popular show. So they do the same thing. And, um, you know, again, not to fully blame him, I guess, but I'm, I'm going to just for the sake of the video, but yeah, he, he kind of ruined news because of that. <laughs> he was, he had a good idea. Everybody copied it, even though they shouldn't because it was a comedy show and, um, he ruined news. <laughs> Yeah, people should not get their good news from a comedy show. That's just... Like, oh, I, I tell you. <laughs> there's... I've heard people say they only watch, like... Uh, you know, who, who, is it Trevor Noah that's on there now? Yeah, he, he's garbage. Just saying, yeah. like, John Stewart they, at least was funny. <laughs> yeah, the, he always looks confused. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't understand why they... I don't know why they hired him, because he just doesn't... He doesn't have charisma, because you have to at least give John Stewart credit for being a very charismatic individual. Yeah. At, at one point, I think he's gotten kind of lazy now, and he just goes for the, like, 
one-liners that aren't funny anymore. But he was at one time really hilarious. Or at least at that point, I thought he was hilarious. <laughs> No, it's 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 also really odd how um, I, I've noticed that a lot of TV personalities. I don't understand it, but what happened to charisma? Like, there used to be a lot of very charismatic individuals, but now I, I'm not seeing it. Even for yeah. like opinion pieces and stuff. Like, um, well, like here's an example. Say what you will of oh, why is his name not coming into my head? The you can't explain the moon guy. I don't know. Bill O'Reilly. There oh, we Bill, go. Okay, Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> like he. Oh. Charismatic. You're saying he was charismatic? You kind of cut out for a second. Yeah, I'm saying he's very charismatic. Yeah, like, he is. Like he's, he's an asshole, all that sort of stuff. Like I, I actually only see very charismatic individuals on the right anymore. It's it's weird because the left used to have their like charisma war as well. I don't. I don't understand why they've gotten so much, like, bland toast people on. Well, and I think this might have a lot to do with the SJW culture is the left is scared because they don't want to lose their jobs. So they, they, they've become, you know, white bread, you know, very plain ice cream, vanilla ice cream, no, no chocolate in there. And um, the right, they don't have to worry about the conservative Christians anymore because – more or less, nobody listens to them. And so they're doing whatever they want, you know, and, and on TV, I think a lot of that also has to do with the shift from cable to the internet where people can be their own business on the internet and make a living saying whatever the hell they want. And that's something that's, you know, growing and growing more each day where you have talented people not having to listen to a network say, Oh, well, you can't do that. You know, they can do it if they want to. I find it funny that I was just like criticizing charisma, which I know I don't have much. I, I listen to my video and I'm like, wow, I just sound smug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, uh, I, ha have you ever watched uh, Chrissy Ossity's vid videos? Uh, Chrissy, uh, yeah, I've watched some of them. <laughs> you notice that we sound identical. Um, are you her? <laughs> no, I'm not her, but it's something I noticed when I started playing with my voice and like recording myself. I'm like, oh, I hope <laughs> people don't think I'm like really smug or so. Yeah, I don't like her videos because <laughs> just because they come off, like you said, smug and I don't agree. So I get triggered and I'm like, fuck you and click off of it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I was thinking about doing a response video to one of her videos if I can find like a decent one because then it would sound like she's talking to herself and I just think that would be fabulous. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. <laughs> I'm aware oh, of my well shortcomings. <laughs> Well, I've really had a lot of fun talking, and I uh, i mean, we could probably go on for hours, but I have pizza in the oven, and I'm really hungry, so um, I'm going to have to let you go, and maybe we can do this again. I want to thank you all that watched. Uh, we have we had up to like 60 viewers at one point. We got 49 now, so I want to thank you all for coming on and uh, listening to us drone on about you know random stuff. And I want to thank you for coming on as well. And until next time, uh, thank you guys. Bada bing, bada boom.